Grace and peace to you. I'm Mitzi Johnson. I'm the pastor of Columbus United Methodist Church and Saluda United Methodist Church. Both of these are churches in Polk County, North Carolina. These churches I serve have been contemplating how we can show greater hospitality to those in our community who are struggling to achieve mental health. Our weekly worship in these last few months has centered on things such as dementia, mental illness, uh, anxiety, depression, and a wide range of disabilities. And what we have been trying to do is to bring these topics into conversation with the biblical story. One of our goals really is to inspire conversation in our community that reduces the impact of the stigma of mental illness. And another is to build relationships with all sorts of partners in the community who are also trying to uh, bring more hope and compassion and love into the community. And so one of these organizational partners might be yours, and you represent both faith-based and secular organizations. We are creating this presentation for a whole wide range of groups, including public and private health care, nonprofits, governmental organizations, and grassroots organizations. Really, what drives all of this and what um, draws us all together is that we all recognize that suffering is common to all the people that we care about, and that all the people that we care about long for redemption. It's something that we all seek regardless of our spiritual disciplines. This presentation was originally intended to be offered as a, as a public prayer service that would be held in, the, in Holy Week in 2020, the week leading up to Easter. The coronavirus pandemic has caused us to change our plans, and so we now offer this to you online uh, as, as just a gift to you, to, for you to know how much we care about your organization. We care about the people that you serve. And in this prayer service, what we're doing is inviting you into a story, a really powerful story of redemption. It's a story that's illustrated through 14 pieces of art. And in the story, it's, it's Jesus's journey to the cross. So it starts with suffering, but ultimately points to a story of resurrection, of hope and healing for all people. This service focuses entirely on the artwork of Mary Button, and it leans heavily on her own writing and her own research. I invite you to visit her website, marybutton.com, and look at her devotional art that she creates. She creates a lot of art that addresses matters of social justice, things like climate change, mass incar incarceration, uh, migratory peoples. She really has a heart towards bringing the biblical story into a dialogue with places in our world that need resurrection and hope. And so we thank Mary Button for her art, for the conversation that it creates, uh, and for um, allowing us to use that art in this prayer service for you. And so as we consider her Stations of the Cross, I, I ask you to gaze into the pictures and allow them to gaze back into your heart and your soul. And as you do all that gazing, ask yourself, where am I in this story? How might this story be speaking to me and how might it be calling to me to act? and to serve and to love in this community. We'll spend just a few minutes on e each piece of art, and then we'll talk about an organization in our community that supports people with a specific aspect of mental illness, and then we'll pause and pray for that organization. And so with that, we move on to the first station of the cross, which is Pilate condemns Jesus to death. Let us go to the first station. Jesus' journey to the cross began when he appeared before Pontius Pilate, the prefect of the Roman province of Judea. Here, 
Pilate's face is obscured as Jesus is brought up on charges of conspiring against Rome. Pilate sees no reason to execute Jesus. And so there's a moment when our hopes soar as Pilate lobbies the crowd to release him. Maybe they'll set him free. And then descends again as the mob shouts, crucify him. Those who bear the stigma of mental illness can identify with the strange feeling of dissonance that occurs in life when we experience a huge gap between what we think ought to happen and what actually does happen. More specifically, Mary Button, the artist, wants the viewer to get a hint of the huge emotional swings experienced as a sufferer of bipolar disorder. Her paintings, inspired by poet Robert Lowell, who describes his experience of mania as a magical orange grove in a nightmare. In the beginning, mania can feel like a special invitation into a brighter, blazing alternate reality, but there's a darkness lurking, a toll that must be paid for the sleepless nights and grandiose mornings. Those with bipolar disorder often feel as though they're wandering, invisible in a chaotic wilderness. Can the wilderness be tamed? Can it be made a safe space? The biblical prophet Isaiah provides hope to those who wander there, saying, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. Even the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. We give thanks today as we end this first station of the cross for organizations that bring order to the wilderness that mental illness can so often create. And one organization that does that is the Polk County North Carolina Mental Health Advisory Committee. This committee is comprised of representatives from all sorts of aspects in the community, from private and nonprofit and religious and governmental organizations. But all of these organizations come together with one collective voice to support mental health and substance abuse awareness, to assess service needs and promote resources, to analyze outcomes, and to bring a level of accountability to the other people on the committee and to the community as well. So let us now pause and pray for the Polk County North Carolina Mental Health Advisory Committee. Let us pray. Loving and transforming God for lives that feel as if they're wandering in the wilderness. Let your presence light the way. Thank you for the voice of advocacy and hope put forward by this committee. Strengthen and bless their work to improve the lives of those touched by mental illness and to be a productive and uniting force in the mental health community. We ask this in the name of the one who came through the wilderness, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus accepts his cross. In the second station, we see Jesus accepting his cross. The scene is based on the Gospel of John, which says, So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. What's striking about the way this terrible scene is depicted here is that the artist infuses it with hope and transformation. Jesus isn't characterized by the worst moment in his life. Instead, the artist, Mary Button, sees in the scene the possibility of new life, butterflies, doves, and Jesus running toward the cross with outstretched arms. Button's interpretation of this part of the story leans heavily on the words of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. The part of this verse that may strike a chord of truth in those with mental illness 
is that suffering can be seasonal or rhythmic. There may be times when symptoms flare and other times when they recede. Sometimes the larger community identifies a sufferer only with their worst moments. We see them demonstrate symptoms of their disease and then decide that that's the heart of who they are, that they're defined by those symptoms. This painting urges us to look at that worst moment in a person's life and see in it amazing possibility. As we complete Station 2, we give thanks to RHA, which provides a wide range of treatment options and recovery support for adults and youth who are living with mental illness or that have mental health needs or struggling with concurrent issues. RHA provides comprehensive care and crisis services, employment services, outpatient services, and transitional services. So let us pray for RHA and their work. Loving and comforting God for lives engulfed in roiling chaos. Let your abundant grace bring a true and peaceful joy. Thank you for the breadth of programs uh, designed to help people with mental illness and their recovery and to assume their valued life roles that all of this offered by the staff of RHA. Strengthen and bless their efforts to enhance the quality of care across North Carolina. And we ask this in the name of the one who healed by your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Falls the First Time In Station 3, Jesus Falls for the First Time. This scene is based more on the traditional story of Jesus' last days than on any particular scripture. The cross in this picture bears the words of a biographer of August Strindberg, an artist who suffered psychotic attacks. What his biographer noted was that Strindberg's illness led him to make original and meaningful connections between things that most of us would miss. The cross says, The kingfisher, he claimed, had evolved the brightly colored scale-like feathers on its neck and wings by spending many hours sitting and staring down into the water at its prey, the fishes. The mackerel's moray back reflected wave motions in the water to the extent that one could copy and present them as waves on canvas. The quote points to the extraordinary artistic connections made by creative types who experience the swings of mania and depression. Mary Button, who painted this whole series of posters and who suffers bipolar disorder herself, worried that she was trying to balance too many symbols, patterns, and colors in her series. Eventually, she decided to let too much be the point. After all, if there was ever a story that calls for too muchness, it's the story of Jesus' death and resurrection. We can be thankful for a God who brings meaning from chaos, who helps us not to contain each other, but helps us to lead one another forth in joy. As we complete the third station of the cross, we give thanks today for Cooper Reeks a residential healing community and transitional living program for adults who are struggling with mental health challenges. Specifically, we're thankful for their community work and service program where residents can choose a form of work that allows them to live into their interests and into their vocation, whether that work be creating art, building drums, uh, doing handicrafts, that, that achieve a purpose and help the community, or whether it be gardening or building or some other vocation. All of this work contributes to the communal life of the community at Cooper Reese. And so now we go to God giving thanks for them and the work that they do. Let us pray. Loving and inspiring God, for lives jarred by the flux of buffeting emotions, let your peace bring an ordered rhythm to each day. 
Thank you for the showcase of talent and creativity and productivity of those with mental illness that are represented by the residents of Cooper Reese. Strengthen and bless their chosen arts and vocations so that they'll find joy in contributing to their community. We ask this in the name of the one who calmed the wind, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus Falls the First Time In Station 3, Jesus Falls for the First Time. This scene is based more on the traditional story of Jesus' last days than on any particular scripture. The cross in this picture bears the words of a biographer of August Strindberg, an artist who suffered psychotic attacks. What his biographer noted was that Strindberg's illness led him to make original and meaningful connections between things that most of us would miss. The cross says, The kingfisher, he claimed, had evolved the brightly colored scale-like feathers on its neck and wings by spending many hours sitting and staring down into the water at its prey, the fishes. The mackerel's moray back reflected wave motions in the water to the extent that one could copy and present them as waves on canvas. The quote points to the extraordinary artistic connections made by creative types who experience the swings of mania and depression. Mary Button, who painted this whole series of posters and who suffers bipolar disorder herself, worried that she was trying to balance too many symbols, patterns, and colors in her series. Eventually, she decided to let too much be the point. After all, if there was ever a story that calls for too muchness, it's the story of Jesus' death and resurrection. We can be thankful for a God who brings meaning from chaos, who helps us not to contain each other, but helps us to lead one another forth in joy. As we complete the third station of the cross, we give thanks today for Cooper Reeks a residential healing community and transitional living program for adults who are struggling with mental health challenges. Specifically, we're thankful for their community work and service program where residents can choose a form of work that allows them to live into their interests and into their vocation, whether that work be creating art, building drums, uh, doing handicrafts, that, that achieve a purpose and help the community, or whether it be gardening or building or some other vocation. All of this work contributes to the communal life of the community at Cooper Reese. And so now we go to God giving thanks for them and the work that they do. Let us pray. Loving and inspiring God, for lives jarred by the flux of buffeting emotions, let your peace bring an ordered rhythm to each day. Thank you for the showcase of talent and creativity and productivity of those with mental illness that are represented by the residents of Cooper Reese. Strengthen and bless their chosen arts and vocations so that they'll find joy in contributing to their community. We ask this in the name of the one who calmed the wind, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry his cross. Station 5 is based on the scene in Matthew 27, 32, where Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry his cross. Imagine yourself to be Simon of Cyrene. In what ways do do you bear the cross of Jesus in your life in the middle of chaos and fear? In this painting, the ones who, like Simon, must bear a cross in the midst of chaos and fear are those who suffer from schizophrenia. The artist here presents a quote by Robert Bailey. It says, During periods of acute bombardment, paving stones transform into demonic faces shattering in front of my petrified eyes. Kay Jamison writes in her book, Night Falls Fast, The gradual disintegration of a mind is almost incomprehensible. 
to observe its unwinding form within is surely intolerable. To be frightened of the world, to be walled off from it and harangued by voices, to see life as distorted faces and shapes and colors, to lose constancy and trust in one's brain, for most the pain is beyond conveying. Studies show that less than 3% of those with schizophrenia are ever considered a danger to others. Yet popular culture often depicts schizophrenia as a vindictive, murderous disease hell-bent on the death of innocent bystanders. Schizophrenia occurs twice as often among low-income populations than the middle class. For years, the assumption was that the hardship and trauma triggered the disease. The reverse may be true. The disease itself is a trauma that leaves in its wake economic hardship, physical disability, addiction, incarceration, and untimely death. One way we as a community can stand up for the weak is to defend against misperceptions. As we come to the end of Station 5 of these Stations of the Cross, we give thanks today for Thrive, an organization which helps people with mental illness lead meaningful and productive lives uh, of their choice in their own community. Thrive provides opportunities for learning and coping and social, social lives for independent living and vocational skills. Thrive assists members in obtaining jobs, and the clubhouse provides a place for members to find a sense of belonging and acceptance and friendship. And so today we give thanks to Thrive. Let us pray. Loving and constant God, for lives affected by disorder and disruption, let your steadfastness Provide a constancy in each day. We thank you for the ways that Thrive offers a place for individuals with mental illness to engage and to regain self-worth and purpose and confidence. Lord, we ask that you strengthen and bless the work of Thrive staff to provide a safe place for being involved in meaningful work and meaningful relationships. We ask this in the name of the one who restored peace to the afflicted, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Veronica Wipes the Face of Jesus Station 6 is based on tradition and depicts the moment when Veronica offered comfort to Jesus by wiping the sweat from his face as he journeyed to Golgotha. Jesus' life has always been one intertwined with the pain and weeping of women. Mary his mother encountered hardship due to the circumstances of her pregnancy and marriage, as well as the conditions in which she gave birth. Jesus' birth was marked by a genocide of infants and toddlers as King Herod ordered the murder of all children in Jerusalem two years and under. Matthew chapter 2 verse 18 recalls the prophecy of Jeremiah who said, A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be consoled because they are no more. Unfortunately, the world continues to give women reasons to mourn and cry out against pain and injustice. In the early 20th century, women were routinely institutionalized for depression and sometimes sterilized. In this painting, Veronica is joined by two 19th and early 20th century women who experienced the massive failures of the asylum system. One is Elizabeth Packard, who became an outspoken advocate for women after she was institutionalized against her will by her husband, later imprisoned in her own home, before finally being declared sane. The other woman is Carrie Buck, who was institutionalized and sterilized after she was sexually assaulted by a family member and found to be pregnant. Jesus who was himself oppressed, gave his life to liberate the oppressed, including women. 
As we come to the end of Station 6, we give thanks to Steps to Hope in Columbus, North Carolina, which offers education and advocacy and victim assistance to women who are experiencing domestic abuse or sexual, uh, sexual violence. Steps to Hope can provide temporary and emergency safe shelter for these women, along with counseling by someone who is a compassionate and a skilled and a gifted listener. So let us go in prayer now, giving thanks for Steps to Hope and their staff. Loving and nurturing God for lives impacted by sexual abuse or domestic violence, let your sustenance provide relief. Thank you for the tender care and assistance provided by the staff and volunteers of Steps to Hope. Strengthen and bless their work to create a community free from violence of domestic and sexual abuse. Lord, we ask this in the name of the one who extended mercy to women, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus falls for the second time. Looking at the art for Station 7, which is based on tradition, we find ourselves again walking alongside a stumbling Jesus. If you've ever felt nameless and forgotten, then you may have the beginnings of insight of what Jesus felt as he carried the cross. Jesus understood the human experience of rejection and insecurity. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 20, he said, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Like today's homeless, Jesus the Wanderer knew the pain of being regarded as a poor and hapless nobody. In 1963, President Kennedy signed into law the Community Mental Health Act. It was intended to end the warehousing of mentally ill in asylums and provide grants to states for the establishment of community mental health centers as alternatives to institutionalization. Only half of the needed centers were ever built and none were fully funded, and no money was provided to operate them long term. The homeless population of the United States exploded. Today, as many as 48% of the homeless are said to live with some form of mental illness. We come now to the end of Station 7, and we give thanks in this moment for Habitat, uh, Habitat for Humanity of East Polk County and of the Thermal Belt. We also give thanks to Thermal Belt Outreach Ministry. Habitat for Humanity empowers through helping families acquire shelter, and they believe that all people, no matter who they are or where they're from, deserve a quality of life, that, uh, and they deserve an ability to feel strengthened and housed adequately. Everyone deserves a decent place to live. We also give thanks for uh, Thermal Bell Outreach Ministry, and they also provide compassionate outreach to the people of Polk County who don't have the resources they need for some of the uh, basic life needs, such as food and money for utilities. So let us go to God in prayer, giving thanks for these wonderful organizations. Loving and cherishing God, for lives of uncertainty and hazard and indigni indignity, let your love provide a shelter of warmth and safety. Thank you for a commitment to provide shelter and basic necessities of life by the staffs of Habitat for Humanity as well as Thermal Belt Outreach Ministry. Strengthen and bless their work to provide homes, food, and financial assistance. We ask this in the name of the one who extended radical hospitality Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. The art for Station 8 is based on the scene in Luke chapter 23, verses 27 through 31, in which the women who followed Jesus to the cross are beating their chests and wailing for him. Luke has to make a special point to explain that some of those following Jesus were women, as if they were insignificant otherwise. Yet Galatians 3.28 tells us that there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. This verse speaks to the tragedy of not being seen 
as an individual with value. In this painting, the light bulbs are meant to illuminate those who are often rendered invisible. There is a link between the invisibility of women in biblical times and the way African Americans in our own times are made to feel invisible, particularly young African American males. The social realities of being part of an invisible society, seen only through the specter of ugly stereotypes and racist ideologies, are directly responsible for the rising suicide rate among young black men. From 1980 to 1995, the suicide rate for black adolescents rose from 5.6 per 100,000 of the population to 13 per 100,000 more than a 100% increase. John Wilson writes, Suicide is the number one killer among young black people, but we call it gunfire. We don't even like to talk about it. We've got to change the way America feels about depression. If you Google the hate map, you'll find a map of all known hate groups in the U.S. An astounding number of them are based in North Carolina. As we complete Station 8, we give thanks for the mission of unity in the community of the foothills. Unity in the community seeks to improve the quality of life for the citizens of Polk County uh, and all the surrounding areas by providing spiritual, cultural, and educational and entertaining activities for the whole family, regardless of race or nationality or gender or any other diversities. So let us go to God in prayer, giving thanks for unity in the community. Let us pray. Loving and just God, thank you for the passionate care for uh, the whole community that's offered by the volunteers of unity in the community. Thank you for their love for children that's evidenced in their summer enrichment camp and their love for college students and those aspiring to college through their college prep program and for their social events that seek to build relationships and strengthen the community. Bless their endeavors. And we ask this in the name of the one who is the head of the whole body of Christ in all of its beautiful color and diversity. Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Falls the Third Time. This station marks the traditional moment of Jesus falling while carrying his cross. No doubt Jesus suffered under the weight of injury, both physical and psychological. Psychic injury refers not to an amputated arm or leg, but to an assault on a sense of God's justice. Jesus clearly felt great apprehension about the coming crucifixion. Earlier, in Mark 14, 32 through 34, he and the disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I'm deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. Jesus was wrestling with the evil that he knew was coming. Deployed soldiers have to wrestle with the moral realities of war. They, too, have to figure out how to live with what lies before them or what lies behind them so that it doesn't continue to haunt them. In the case of veterans, psychic injury is an injury sustained when a person experiences the brokenness of this world in immediate and horrific proportions. It's a normal response to abnormal events, and often manifests itself as PTSD, a heavy weight that is borne long after deployment ends. As we complete Station 9, we give thanks today for the Veterans Services of Polk County. The Veterans Services of Polk County provides assistance to veterans who have honorably served our country. The The Certified County Veteran Service Officer helps to provide on-site counseling and assistance so that veterans and their dependents can get the things that they need and deserve and which are their right. And so 
Today, we give thanks to God for the veteran services of Polk County. Let us pray. Loving and healing God for lives that bear the trauma of moral injury. Let your consolation be a reconciling balm for the spirit. Thank you for veteran services of Polk County. Strengthen and bless their efforts to connect veterans to needed services. As these veterans seek people to hear their stories and to help them wrestle with their understanding of what it means to serve God and to serve country. We ask this in the name of the one who promised the presence of a comforter, Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is stripped of his garments. Station 10 is based on Matthew 27, verses 27 through 31, where soldiers took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, gathered around him, stripped him, and put a scarlet robe on him. After twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head, put a reed in his right hand, and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. It's hard to hear this story and not feel the indignity Jesus suffered. Nothing was left for him but death. Indignity and mocking often lead to despair. Virginia Woolf captured this kind of despair in her suicide note when she wrote, Dearest, I feel certain I'm going mad again. We cannot go through another one of those terrible times, and I shan't recover this time. So I'm doing what seems to be the best thing to do. You have been in every way all that anyone could be. I don't think two people could be happier until this terrible disease came. I can't fight any longer. Mary Button writes that suicide is often decried as the ultimate narcissism. Yet, Wolf worries about the, the effect of her suicide will have on her husband. It's all too easy to oversimplify mental illness and blame the victim, but mental illness is complicated. As Christians, we have a charge to connect the presence of despair in the Bible with healthy ways to alleviate despair and heal lives. We can also hold up all that God-given creative minds have produced. Music, literature, science, and medicine as ways for survivors of suicide loss to gain deeper insight into the human condition. As we complete Station 10 on our journey to the cross, we are thankful for the annual Polk County Remembrance Walk. This Remembrance Walk is in recognition of mental health and suicide prevention, and at its September event, which is held at Herman Field in Tryon, North Carolina, participants are invited to walk and they can carry a candle for um, in support of someone's suffering or someone who has struggled with mental health issues. The event was initiated through the efforts of Mary Wells Prelo and Tamara Black in the midst of their grief after the loss of loved ones due to suicide. And so let us go to God in prayer, giving thanks for this walk and for the volunteers and the members of the community who support it. Let us pray. Loving and consoling God for lives devastated by loss, let your solace wipe away tears and mend hearts. Thank you for the selfless work to minister to grieving loved ones by the volunteers of this Remembrance Walk. Strengthen and bless their work as they continue to help our community understand the effects of suicide and its psychological trauma to, uh, to the community and to families. We ask this in the name of the one who assures your grace, Jesus Christ. Amen. Crucifixion. Jesus is nailed to the cross. In Station 11, Jesus is nailed to the cross. The station is based on Luke 23, which says, When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, 
He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals next to him derided him, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. In this painting, artist Mary Button recalls the terror of the suicidal thoughts she felt while a student at New York University. She wasn't alone. She says that after she voluntarily sought hospitalization, she returned to school only to find that bodies started falling from buildings. This is represented by the body outlines falling around Jesus. In all, in Button's final year, seven students committed suicide, some jumping from upper floors of the library and falling onto the circulation desk. One pulled away from a security guard who was trying to save her. Her last words were, tell my dad I'm sorry. As we complete Station 11, we give thanks for the collaboration between the Polk County Public Schools and Blue Ridge Health. These two organizations, the, the public schools and Blue Ridge Health, have opened school-based health centers, which provide behavioral and mental health services that are available to all students um, in the midst of school-based um, clinics. And so we're thankful also to the teachers of the public school system who are so often on the front lines, um, the ones who are often the first to notice a mental health crisis in the life of a student. And we're thankful to the administrators who support them. And, um, and we wanna pray for these teachers and administrators and these organizations and for these families that are um, sometimes drawn into the trauma of mental illness. Let us pray. Loving and strengthening God for lives in a place of desolation or despair, let your strength be known to, to bring us to places of safety. Thank you for the staff of Polk County Schools and the counselors of Blue Ridge Health for walking alongside students suffering from depression and anxiety. Strengthen and bless their work to lead students into places of stability and well-being and flourishing. We ask this in the name of the one who comforted those in places of darkness, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus dies on the cross. Station 12 recalls Jesus' death on the cross as he cried out, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. After Jesus breathed his last, the centurion who had seen what had taken place praised God and said, Certainly, this man was innocent. As you gaze at the image, where do you find yourself in it? If you suffer from mental illness, how do you connect with Jesus' human experience of being wrongfully accused and mistreated? The centurion was a Roman, a member of an occupying force, and yet he saw both the injustice of the legal system as well as the activity of God in carrying out a new form of justice as God welcomed Jesus' spirit. Judy Chamberlain is an activist who fights for the rights of those who are institutionalized in prisons as well as poorly managed mental hospitals. She says, There are real indignities and real problems when all facets of life are controlled when to get up, to eat, to shower, and chemicals are put inside of our bodies against our will. Survivors of poor quality institutions describe their treatments as deeply traumatic. The Psychiatric Survivors Movement calls for churches and others to form mutual support networks of people who believe that recovery from mental illness is a possibility. As we complete Station 12 of these Stations of the Cross, we are thankful for organizations that serve to build healing bridges between mental health care and the criminal justice system. 
We're especially thankful for the Wellbeing Project Community Group. Uh, this community group is an intentional monthly gathering at, in Columbus that cultivates well-being with underserved and justice-involved people through the sharing of meals and stories and support. So let us go in prayer now, uh, giving thanks for the Well-Being Project community group. Loving and redeeming God for lives overcome by mental illnesses' consequences, let your redemption lead to recovery and restoration. Thank you for this community group's efforts to support those engaged with DSS, impacted by domestic violence, going through trial, uh, bail or release from incarceration, and those who are struggling with addiction and mental health issues. We ask that you strengthen and bless their work to share meals and stories and support. We ask this in the name of the one who redeems all of us, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is taken down from the cross. In station 13, Jesus is taken down from the cross. The people didn't want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. The soldiers broke the legs of the men who had been crucified alongside Jesus, but because Jesus was already dead, they decided there was no need to break his legs to hasten his death. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. This work reminds us of all those who seek wholeness. Artist Mary Button intended for this poster to represent the experience of schizophrenia, but since other posters already represent that illness, our health ministries team asked us to reflect on another form of mental brokenness that affects so many families in our congregations, Alzheimer's disorder and other forms of dementia. With Alzheimer's, the framework of a person's inner life breaks down and fractures. The core personality disperses and eventually disappears, leaving a silent emptiness. Yet what remains is a place where the Spirit of God dwells. Whatever stage the dementia has reached, the person in all their human frailty continues to seek the divine. At Station 13, remember that where we sometimes look at a person and see brokenness, God looks and sees a beloved child worthy of redemption and wholeness. For if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. For those in our life who suffer Alzheimer's and dementia, we can pray for them the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Whoever I am, thou knowest, O God, I am thine. We come now to the end of Station 13, and we give thanks to Saluda Living in Place, which helps to reduce barriers for Saluda's senior residents and helps them to live longer and more enjoyable lives. Saluda Living in Place, sometimes called SLIP, it offers a whole host of programs and social activity, activities and community involvement. We also give thanks to St. Luke's Hospital for their Senior Life Solutions. Senior Life Solutions provides outpatient counseling to address the emotional and behavioral health of people in the county who are over the age of 65. Let us pray for these organizations. Loving and knowing God for lives emptied and no longer recognizable, let us remember that each of us is fully and thoroughly known by you. Thank you for Saluda Living in Place. Strengthen and bless their work to ensure that seniors serve as an asset to each other and to the entire community. We ask also that you bless the work of St. Luke's Senior Life Solutions as they assist older adults experiencing depression and anxiety and trauma. We ask this in the name of the one we recognize as the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is laid in the tomb. In this last section, Nicodemus and the women brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, and they took the body of Jesus, wrapped it with the spices in linen cloth, and laid Jesus in the tomb. Notice the faithful community gathered around Jesus. Where might you imagine yourself in this image? There is more to this picture than meets the eye. Because we know the rest of the story, 
we know there is far more going on here than a mere man being laid in a tomb. With the Apostle Paul, we can stare down humiliation and indignity and scoff. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? We know that on Easter morning, we will be able to rejoice, saying, Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout the Stations of the Cross, we're asked to consider the words we use to talk about people. If the church and the wider community are able to carry a word of hope and healing to people who suffer from mental illness and their families, what would you say is the core of that message? Perhaps, in part, it is this. The words we use matter. The images we use matter. The connections we make and the similarities we find with each other and the patterns of our lives are what matter most. People are far more complicated than the labels we put on them. We come now to the end of our final station. This, uh, in this station, we are thankful for the Polk County Health and Wellness Coalition. This coalition seeks to improve the lives of all citizens in Polk County, North Carolina through health and wellness awareness, uh, through promotions and also through advocacy. We're especially thankful for, to them for bringing to our community the mental health first aid training. This training helps us to recognize that all people struggle that we in the community can look for signs and triggers and symptoms of crisis and that we can offer first aid instead of judgment. So let us go to God in thanksgiving for Polk County Health and Wellness Coalition. Let us pray. Loving and resurrecting God for lives diminished by labels and judgments that are associated with mental illness. Form in our hearts an acceptance of the value and dignity of every single person. Thank you for the work to build better lives and, uh, and on behalf of all the people of the, of the Polk County Wellness Coalition. We ask that you strengthen and bless their work. This we pray in the name of the one who you restored, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we look forward to Easter and to resurrection. And I want to invite you and the people you serve, um, anyone you love and care about, to, uh, to reach out and to build community. And especially want to invite you to come to worship at Saluda United Methodist Church. Sadly, the United Methodist Church in Columbus will be closing shortly as that congregation but we'll resume in time as the With All Church. The With All Church uh, seeks to serve those justice-involved peoples and the people who care for them. And so either of these churches would welcome um, anyone through their doors. Uh, and we, we pray that this prayer service will be a first step towards building bridges between the church, the whole church, and the community. Thank you for taking the time to pray with us on this day. Go in peace.